I am Sebastian. Today we are going to discuss about protein trafficking. If you look at a eukaryotic cell, uh, more than half of the cell volume is uh, in the inner cellular compartments. For example, about 54% is occupied by cytoplasm. In the remaining 46% they are all trapped in uh, in uh, inner cellular compartments. For example, uh, out of this 46 percentage, 22 percentage itself is occupied by mitochondria, and all the other cellular organelles like endoplasmic reticulum, uh, lysosomes, chloroplasts, uh, uh, Golgi bodies, all these cellular compartments. They are segregated, they occupy the remaining 46% of the cellular volume. Now, you are aware that a protein is synthesized in the cytoplasm. Now, once a protein is synthesized in the cytoplasm, it has to be rooted or directed towards the right location. For example, certain proteins must be rooted to nucleus, some should be directed towards endoplasmic reticulum, some should go to lysosomes, etc. We are going to look at how exactly these proteins are trafficked, how these proteins are directed towards these locations. If you look at uh, the, uh, the type of uh, uh, direction, type of transport, there are three different major types. In the three different major types are, one is called a gated transport. In the first one is a gated transport. What happens in the gated transport is, uh, topologically, topologically equivalent spaces. So, transportation occurs to topology equivalent spaces. For example, transportation of cytoplasm to nucleus. So, it is, it is topologically equivalent. In the second type of uh, transport is, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a transmembrane transport. So, you need a transmembrane, transmembrane. Here, you require a transport protein known as the translocase protein is needed. Here it is transporting to topologically distant spaces. Distant space. Distant space. So by using a translocase protein. And in the third type of transport mechanism that is seen is vesicular transport. Vesicular transport. So what happens in the vesicular transport is, it is again to topologically equivalent space. So uh, what happens here is, for uh, we can see that uh, uh, Golgi bodies or endoplasmic reticulum to Golgi bodies. This is an example of a vesicular transport, where in the protein to be transported, is forming a vesicle and it gets fused with the membrane of the Golgi bodies. It is in, in a way it is a kind of a pinching off. It is getting attached, getting merged and that is how the protein is transported. We can see therefore there are three different ways of transporting proteins. The gator transport, the transmembrane transport and the vesicular transport. Now, each of these three different types of uh, uh, mechanisms of transport are uh, directed by sorting signals. Sorting signals are a set of sequences in the, um, in the protein itself which will direct, which will give an indication that this protein is supposed to go to a particular place. And these signals are identified by a receptor which is present on the right location. For example, there will be a particular signal uh, that is directing a protein to a nucleus and nucleus will have a receptor which will identify this particular signal and that protein is taken inside. There are two kinds of sorting signals. One kind of sorting signal 
So if you consider this is the end terminus of the protein, so this is the, the signal sequence and then there is the protein, this is the carboxyl end and then this is the signal sequence. Normally, in the signal sequence that has been identified so far, that will have about 15 to 60 amino acid residues. And these are normally what is found is it has a, a heavy load of hydrophobic amino acid like uh, uh, lysine, um, is, uh, arginine. These are the amino acids that are normally found on these signal peptides. Now, this, pep this protein, it will fold. This will fold itself into, you can say that, okay, this protein is folding and this is the signal peptide. And once the protein is directed to a place, this can be cleaved. This can be cleaved by an enzyme known as a signal peptidase enzyme. So, if the signal peptidase will cleave this and then the protein is taken inside. What kind of mechanism? to transport a protein to a particular location. Another kind of mechanism to transport a protein to a, a system, a, a location is, another kind of signal which is found, uh, uh, you have a signal here, then a stretch of protein, okay, let me put it this way. So there is a stretch of protein, another pen we will use, stretch of protein, another stretch of protein, another stretch of protein. Okay, and here is a signal peptide, here is a signal peptide. What will happen is the so what will happen if this is how the protein is going to be folded? It's very evident these in the signal peptides forms a kind of a 3D topology. And this 3D topology is what is detected or identified by the receptor. And it has to exist in this 3D topology. It's therefore, it is very difficult to analyze and study this kind of a topology in the native form. A lot of studies have been carried out uh, based on the previous kind of uh, signal sequences, the, the mechanism. Uh, genetically engineered signal sequences have been added or chemically added to a particular protein and it has been monitored how exactly this protein is transferred to a particular location. There is a technical difficulty involved at the moment in creating this kind of a 3D topology and to allow a protein to root or send it to a particular location. So we have quickly seen in the problem associated with the types of uh, uh, transportation that happens in a cell and in the kind of signals that are used in transporting proteins.